In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to make a classic French dessert, the creme brulee. Any chef worth his salt in any of my kitchens knows how to make a creme brulee. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. We want a beautiful velvety baked egg custard finish with an amazing caramelized top. So you get a lovely crunch when you go into it. Let's get cracking. So the first step of this is to get the cream on the boil. Now, just as a bit of a side note, there's not many ingredients on this table, but don't get it twisted. You've got to follow every single stage of this recipe because it can be so easily messed up. And then you have to start again and spend a fortune on eggs. So I'm gonna put the cream into the pan and bring it up to the boil. So while the cream's coming up to temperature, keep your eye on it, you don't want it going all over. I've got eight egg yolks, 65 grams of sugar. So that just goes straight in. I've also got this vanilla bean paste. Now this is really good and really accessible as Madagascan vanilla pods are mega expensive. This is a really, really good alternative and gives a really punchy vanilla flavor. So we're gonna go with half a teaspoon of that. And you can see it's super thick and syrupy, really nice, which is why we don't use loads and loads of sugar. So now I want to give that a nice whisk together, making sure all the sugar, eggs and vanilla are all incorporated. And then we just wait for our cream to come to the boil. Right, so the cream's come to the boil. Now what's important we do is we just pull that off the heat. We don't want to put the boiling hot cream straight into the eggs because we're just going to get sweet scrambled eggs. So we'll just leave that for 10, 15 seconds just to sort of come down, simmer down a little bit. Give your eggs another little whisk and then we'll pour the cream on. Now what's important with this, this is the most important stage of this dish, is you've got to keep the eggs moving. Otherwise you're just going to end up with scrambled eggs. So. Keeping the eggs moving all the time, slowly pour the cream on. If your bowl's wazzing around, a good tip is to get a tea towel and just pop it underneath and it'll stop the bowl spinning around. And the beauty about using this vanilla bean paste is you can instantly smell that vanilla hit when the hot cream goes on. It's so much better than vanilla extract, as vanilla extract has a real synthetic sort of flavour. If you want in the traditional vanilla bean flavour, either go with a Madagascan vanilla pod or use this, it's incredible. So when the cream's in, just keep it moving around a little bit until it's all incorporated and the temperature will come down naturally because of the cold glass bowl or any mixing bowl that you use. And then just to be sure that there's no scrambled bits, we pour that through a sieve into a jug. Easy peasy. So now we come to the baking part. Now that sounds a bit odd, baking creme brulee. We're not actually just going to bake it, we're going to cook it in a really low oven, 115 degrees, and we're going to cook it in what's called a bain-marie, which is a traditional way to cook creme brulees. So our terracotta balls go into the tray, we pour our brulee mix in, you want it almost to the top, but not right to the top because you don't want to be spilling it all over when you head to the oven. And then we get some water and we pour the water into the tray about halfway up the terracotta ball. We're going to stick this into an oven at 115 degrees and it should take between 25 and 35 minutes. But just to be sure, check on it every 10 minutes. And when it's done, you'll get a beautiful little wobble. The liquid will be no more. The eggs will have set in the cream and we're ready to take out the oven and chill. A little chefy tip, 
is what we do is if you've got some bubbles on the top when you pour your mixture into the terracotta balls, get your blowtorch and just gently glance it over the top and it gets rid of all those bubbles. So now we're ready to go in the oven. So the creme brulees have been in the oven for about 45 minutes. I've checked on them every five minutes and they should be just about there. Make sure you use a tea towel so you don't burn yourself. There you go. See, I've got chef hands and I can pick these straight out, but I would suggest using a tea towel. So wrap the tea towel around your hand, careful that your fingers don't go in the water, and then just grab them out. And then just quickly slide it, and you'll see that's the wobble that we're after. That's exactly how I want them. So now they'll go into a cold fridge for a minimum of two hours, and then we're ready to caramelize the top with sugar. So I've got my brulees here, just some normal caster sugar. So we'll put a nice coating of caster sugar on the top. And then if you just shake the sugar around so it goes to all the edges. And if there's a little bit that goes on the top, if you just use your thumb and forefinger, and just run it around the rim of the bowl, and you get rid of all that sugar. Now's the fun part. Keep the flame moving all the time, just so you don't concentrate the heat on one part of the sugar so it goes too burnt. And carefully turn the ball, we don't want you burning yourself. That's it, creme brulee. Whatever you do, do not touch that caramel. There's nothing worse than a caramel burn. Just allow that caramel to just set up for a minute, 90 seconds before you serve it, and you can crack on. Mm -hmm.